Math 242, Quest to College, I'm Joe Vasta. We're going to cover 8.2. Now 8.1 was called two variable linear systems. 8.2 is three variable linear systems and an introduction to something called matrices, which we'll get more into in, in 8.3. So one thing you want to note is we're going to skip number 30 on the homework. I don't want you worrying about that. This section has equations, systems that look like this. There are three variables. And there are three equations as well. And so what we want to do is we want to solve this. I remember the first time I was in a math class and the teacher solved these. It was complete chaos. And um, I didn't know what she was doing on the board. And she was all over the place. I mean, I think she was probably a good teacher. I was just sitting in the back. And I think that's when I realized I need glasses. And uh, I just hated these when I first saw them because there just didn't seem to be a systematic way of doing things. But we're going to show you a systematic way. So if you've got three equations, we are trying to solve. That means find a point that lies on all three of those. Okay, and we'll talk about the geometry of this later, but let's just go ahead and see if we can do that. One thing that's not going to change your solution is if I were to take the first equation and switch the order with that in the, in the second equation. So I can interchange two equations, and I'm going to write down that result right here. So look at this, x plus 2y minus z equals 4. 2x plus 3y minus 4z equals 10. And the third equation, I'm just leaving where it is. So rule number one, we can interchange two equations and you get the same system. You get the same solution really for that system. That's not going to affect things and you could probably see that that's the truth. Okay now we're going to get a little bit crazier. I could, so uh, when I have a 1 in the top left corner that's a good thing. Okay, 1 coefficient. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this. We're going to call this guy the pivot. And I'm going to use him, this guy right here, to put a zero there and a zero there. Now how can I do that? Well, another thing that's not going to ch change my solution is if I were to multiply an equation by a number, provided that the number is not zero. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply that equation by negative two which will put opposites on those x's in the first and second equation. Let's go ahead and write that out. So negative 2x minus 4y plus 2z equals negative 8. The problem is I'm going to have to write all this stuff below. So I'll show you a quicker way of doing this, but right now since this looks scary, I'm going to show all the steps on this one. Well, this section you're going to need a lot of paper. I think I said that. Okay, because now, I mean, even though I can go over here, it might be harder to go back and look at. So I'm going to go ahead, move this. I'm going to add. Okay, so this is the, the second thing we can do. We can multiply an equation by a number. That's what we did. It doesn't change the solution. The third thing I can do is add one equation to another equation. So I'm going to add first equation to the second equation. Now when I do that, I have to keep one of those equations the way it is. So I'm going to keep the first equation the way it is. And the second equation is going to become this. Look, I'm going to add the first row and the second row. It's going to become 
zero x. I'll just put a zero there. Then we have minus y minus two z equals two. So you might say, what did you just do, Joe? I added those two equations together and it gave me that equation. And the third equation, he's just been hanging out at the bottom the whole time going, man, I hope I'm not going to have to go through trauma, but he will. So there it is. Okay, let's move on. I'm going to go ahead and scale back the first equation back to what it used to be, which was x plus 2y minus z. So I'm going to multiply it by negative 1 half. And when I do that, I end up getting what it was before, like x plus 2y minus z equals 4. And then I'll just keep these other guys like they are. I'm not going to put the 0 minus 2z equals 2. And then this equation is 3x minus y plus z equals 8. Okay, now I want to use this guy. He's my pivot to put a zero there. Let's show you how to do this a little bit more efficiently so we don't have to write things out. I actually wrote probably two additional steps that we don't have to write out and I'm going to show you how to um, make this a shorter process. I want to put opposites there so I'm going to put a I'm going to multiply this top equation by negative 3. Now instead of writing this whole system a few times, I'm going to write this first equation, modified equation 1, right underneath. So negative 3x minus 6y plus 3z equals negative 12. I'm going to add that to equation 3, and that's going to give me the new equation 3. So let's go ahead and do this. So equation 1 looks like this, x plus 2y minus z equals 4. Second equation, negative y minus 2z equals 2. Third equation, this is where we're doing some work here. We're going to add those together. So this is 0x, I don't need to put anything there, and then I'm going to have minus 7y. This is going to be 4z. This equals negative 4. Okay, we're going to continue now. I'll use another piece of paper. Okay, so I have zeros all below that x. Now I'm going to go to this guy right here. He's going to be my next pivot, and we want to use this as a pivot to put a zero there. So I want opposites there. To get opposites there, I'm going to multiply the second equation by, you might think 7, but 7 is going to not give me opposites. It will have a negative 7 here and a negative 7 here. I want to multiply that equation by negative 7. So when I do that, I end up getting, this is modified equation 2, 7y plus 14z equals negative 14. I'm going to add those two together and let's see what we get. So I'll write out the whole system here. x plus 2y minus z equals 4. And then the second equation is negative y minus 2z equals 2. And the third equation gives me a 0 for the y's. And then I have 18z equals negative 18. I'm almost done with this. So my three rules that I've been using them, I, I interchange two equations at the beginning. I can multiply an equation by a number and I can add one equation to another equation. I'm going to multiply the second equation by negative 1 to get rid of some of those negatives on the left hand side. And then I'm going to multiply both sides of the last equation by 1 over 18. Now a lot of you would have said, oh, divide by 18, that's the same thing. 
So I have x plus 2y minus z equals 4. y plus 2z equals negative 2. And this one gives me z equals negative 1. This is where I want to now start figuring out what x, y, and z is. And the best part about this is I know what z is. z is negative 1. So what I'm about to do now is called back substitution. I plug that into the second equation. And that's going to give me what y is going to be. y plus 2 times negative 1 equals negative 2 y equals, well actually so this is y minus 2 equals negative 2, y is going to equal 0. And that can happen. Okay, let's go ahead and figure out what z is. So I'm going to go ahead and plug y equals 0 along with that one into the first equation. This is why it's called back substitution because you keep going back to the equations above. We have x plus 2 times 0 minus z equals 4. So this is x plus 1, that's a 0 there, equals 4. x equals 3. Whew. So that was quite a lengthy process. Um, we want to make this more efficient, and that's what we're going to do with that word that we saw called matrices. But before we do that, let's put our answer down. Our answer is not an ordered pair now, our answer is an ordered triple. And so the triple kind of goes in alphabetical order, x, y, z. You end up getting a 3, comma, 0, comma, negative 1. We are done with this problem. I'm going to say a few things that might upset people about this. 3, 0, negative 1 is a point in 3 space. We're used to 2 space, which looks like this. And the point 3, 0 in 2 space, so without the negative 1, is 3, 0. It's this guy right here. Well, the z axis actually comes right out at you. So we'll just say that's the positive z-axis, and the negative part of the z-axis goes, goes under the sheet of paper. And so the point 3, 0, negative 1 is not actually that point, but it's that point that's one unit below this piece of paper. You don't have to know that to do your homework. So when they ask you to solve this system, they're really not giving you three lines, they're giving you three planes. And so suppose this one can be the floor, and this one is like a wall, and this is another wall that touches the first wall, and they're saying, what point do those have in common? There's one point, it is 3, 0, negative 1. So that is problem number one. Problem number one we follow these rules here, and this will be included in the PDFs. We interchange two equations. We can multiply an equation by a number, and we can add one equation to another equation. Well, what we're going to do now is we're going to show you that you can use matrices to do this. I'll do a different color. So what a matrix is, it's a table of numbers. Okay, so that's the singular matrix. If you see a whole bunch of them coming your way, you say matrices. And so what we're going to do, and I'm not going to do it on this one because we've already done all the arithmetic. I don't want to do the arithmetic twice. So you're going to take the system and write out the coefficients of the first equation. So look at this. 2, 3, negative 4, 10. And then the second equation will be 1. We'll put it below. 2, 
negative 1, 4, and the third equation becomes 3, negative 1, 1, 8. This right here is a matrix that describes this linear system. Now here's the cool part. Well, before we get to the cool part, the things when things run across like this, those are called rows. So there are three rows. And the things that go up and down, those are called columns. And there are four columns. Um, so the size, matrices have sizes. The size of this matrix, we usually say rows by columns. So this would be three by four. That's the size of a matrix. When you get a matrix from a linear system, this matrix is called the augmented matrix. Now notice that we wrote the augmented matrix here. We could have written a matrix here and here and there and there and there. We could have done all this but in a matrix. The advantage of that is we are not writing X 50 million times. Well, I'm exaggerating, 20 million. And you're not writing Y a lot and Z a lot and equals, equals, equals. So this is going to cut down on the writing. And when you use an augmented matrix, in each row now is what we're looking at. Each row is kind of like the equation. So on this, when you're doing matrices, you can interchange to, whoops, there goes the cap. We get interchange to rows. And you can multiply a row, an row, <laughs> by a number. And you can add one row to another row. Now these three rules are known as row operations. And so if you actually, so we will do a problem. Problem number two, we'll use just matrices. But the end of this problem, we had this, it looks like a system here. So let me use the blue pen. If we had done matrix operations or row operations, we would have ended up getting one, two, negative one, four, zero, one, two, negative two, and then zero, zero, one, negative one. So we would have ended up getting this little triangle of zeros, which is going to be our goal, and then we could do back substitution. Another thing to note that there will be some teachers in books that will go like this, and that actually represents the equal sign. So each column, this column represents x coefficients, y coefficients, z coefficients, the equal sign, and um, just the regular numbers on the right hand side. And so we can do the same thing, put a line there, maybe that line helps you remember that there's an equal sign. So I think the best thing that we can do before we freak out too much about this is to do an example, and this is how you're going to want to do your homework using matrices. So we'll use matrices to solve these systems. Here's problem number two. And um, Let's see if we can do this, this problem. Okay, three equations. One thing that I like is I like to have a one or a negative one up on the top left corner. And I'm actually going to use this equation. So I'm gonna make equation three go up to the first spot and equation one go down to the third spot. So what is, but, but before I do that, okay, so here I'm jumping the gun here. 
I want to first write the augmented matrix. So this is 3, negative 2, 1, 15, taking the coefficients of the first equation. The second equation is negative 1, 1, 2, negative 10. The third equation is 1, negative 1, negative 4, 14. I want this 1 to be up where that 3 is. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to interchange row 1 with row 3. Now, let's go ahead and do that. I get 1, negative 1, negative 4, 14. So that, that was row 3, now it's row 1, and then row 2 is going to stay the same. And row 3 is going to become 3, negative 2, 1, 15. Okay. So that's what we've done. We've interchanged two rows. Now there is a machine language for this, and some of you might not like what I'm going to write, so this is optional. Some of you will. Row 1 gets interchanged with row 3. Those are subscripts there. So some of you might not like that, and you don't have to write that when you do your homework. So I have a pivot. This right here is my pivot. And look what we can do right off the bat. We could add row 1 with row 2 and, and replace row 2 with the results. So look at this. I'm going to go like this. I keep row 1 the way it is. But I'm going to add row 1 with row 2. So I end up getting 0. 0, negative 2, and 4. And some of you might say, what just happened? I added those two rows together, and I ended up getting this right here. Okay, now I'm trying to show you how to be more efficient, so this is what I'm going to do. This pivot wiped out that, that one right there. So there's a zero there. I want this pivot to wipe out the three. In order for that pivot to wipe out the three, I want to multiply row one by a, the opposite here, by negative three. I'm going to put the temporary row one right below the matrix. So this is going to be negative three, three, 12, 14 times three. 42, so this is going to give me negative 42. Okay, so that happens to be my temporary row 1. I'm going to add temporary row 1 with row 3, and that gives me the new row 3, which would be 0, 1, 13, and this right here, which is 42 minus 15, 12 minus 5. 7 we borrowed, so 27. So this looks like it's going to be, oh, and it's negative, so negative 27. Okay, we talked about maybe having a row of, a uh, triangle of zeros down here, and I kind of do that. What I'm going to get that by interchanging row 2 and row 3. So I have this right here, 1, negative 1, negative 4, 14, so now row 3 is 0, 1, 13, negative 27, and row 3 is going to be 0, 0, negative 2, 4. Now the machine language for this, and some of you are not interested in this, but I'll show you what we did to go from here to here. We went Row 1 plus row 2 gives me the new row 2. And then we also went like this. We went negative 3 times row 1 plus row 3 gave me the new row 3. Once again, most of you are not going to write that when you do your homework or the test. And that got us down here. 
How do we go from here to here? We went like this. We went row two, change places with row three. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, I've got my triangle of zero so I can actually, you know, end this madness, but I'm going to multiply row three by a one half or better, a negative one half. And so when I do that, I end up having the first two rows are untouched. But the third row becomes 0, 0. Negative 1 half times negative 2 is 1. Negative 1 half times 4 is going to be negative 2. The machine language for that was going negative 1 half should be using purple times row 3 gives me the new row 3. So we've got the three zeros. This is what I like. We have three zero. Here's a zero here and a zero here and a zero here. So this means we could solve our system by back substitution. Now back here, and I didn't write it, but I'll write it now. The equal sign was right there. So over here, the equal sign is still right here. This column represents X, then there's Y's, and there's Z's. So let's write out those three equations here. The first equation being X minus Y minus 4Z equals 14. Now that was one of my original three equations. I think it was the one on the bottom. The next equation, second row, gives me y, 1 times y, plus 13 times z, equals negative 27. And the last equation, and this one's a good one because it's, it already has one of our letters, it says z equals negative 2. So I'm going to use that and do back substitution. Now I know this seems a little overwhelming and new, but if you practice this, you'll feel that it's not going to be as bad as you first think it's going to be. So y plus 13 times negative 2, that's going to be minus 26 equals negative 27. And so I'm um, add 26 to both sides, y is going to equal negative 1. And now I know what y and z are. I'm going to use this equation, x minus y minus 4 times z. Lots of negatives there. This equals 14. I'm almost off the paper. So this is x plus 1 plus 8 equals 14. x plus 9 equals 14. So x is going to equal 5. And that is how I get my x value. My final answer is going to be x, y, z, so 5, comma, negative 1, comma, negative 2. That is the one point that satisfies, that works in all three of these equations. Okay, and since these are linear systems, these linear systems are going to have the same results as our 2 by 2s or two variable linear systems in 8.1 where you'll have one solution, infinitely many solutions, or no solution. And so we, since we're first learning this, we're doing the ones that have one solution. Um, Another thing your book does is it gives a definition of something called row echelon form. I'm not going to really linger on that. Row echelon form is what this is in. It has the zeros there and each of your pivots is a 1. Once again, I think that's more of a linear algebra topic. So I don't want to turn this into a linear algebra um, class. So we'll move on to the next example. Okay, my next example 
It's this guy right here. And, it, you know, you could pause at any time to try to see if you can do these problems. But the deal is on this one, there seems to be some missing letters. And that, that really upsets people about the missing letters. So let's see what we can do about this problem here. The first thing I want to do is write the matrix. And so my first equation is 2, negative 1, but we're not going to put a 10 there. We're going to go 2, negative 1. There is no z, so we're going to put a 0 as a placeholder. And then we're going to put the 10. The next row is going to be 2. Well, the 2 is going to go in the y column, so there is no x. I'm going to put a 0 there for that. 2, 5, and then 1. And my last equation is going to be 3 for the x. My y is 0, and z is negative, negative 4, the coefficient. And then we have an 8 there. And if you want, you can go ahead and do that. Okay. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm looking at my first column and I really want a 1 on my first column but I do not have a 1. So th does that mean I have to divide out and get fractions and all that stuff? No it doesn't. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and multiply the top row by 3. So I'll just use that 2 as a pivot. So that will give me a 6 right there. I want to have the opposite right here so I'm going to multiply by 2, well that will give me a 6. I should multiply by a negative 2. There goes a helicopter. Okay, we'll see if the video is still on. Every, every, the whole place is shaking. So look what happens. My temporary row 1 is going to become 6, negative 3, 0, 30. And my temporary row 3 is going to become negative 6, 0, 8, negative 16. So I'm going to add these guys together and that's going to give me my new row 3. So let's go ahead and do that. Now there was a bonus because we had a 0 there so we didn't have to really put a 0 there. Row 1 has a 2 as a pivot, which I don't care about. We dealt with that. Row 2, we're leaving alone. And row 3 is going to be 6 minus 6, which is 0. And we have negative 3. And then we have 8. And then we have um, a positive 14. And so that's my next step. If you want the machine language for what we just did, you probably don't want to write this down for most of you. 3 times row 1 minus 2 times row 3 gives me the new row 3. Okay, let's continue. My next step is I want to use this 2 as a pivot to put a zero there because this pivot's done. His job is done. He has zeros all below him. Now this guy wants to put a zero there. In order to do that, I'm going to multiply row two by three because I'm trying to get opposite numbers. So I have a six there and I'm going to multiply row three by a two, which will give me a negative six there. So let me write these temporary rows below this matrix. Zero, six, 15, three, 0, negative 6, 16, um, 28. So I'm going to add those two rows together. And let's write out the, the new matrix right here on this piece of paper. First row is going to stay the way it is. Second row is going to stay the way it is. 0, 2, 5, 1, but the third row is going to become 0, 0, 31, 31. 
And so what do I have? I have the three zeros that I'm looking for. And at this point, you could say, I'm not going to do any more row operations, and I'm going to go back to the equations. What the people in your book do is they say, okay, now we got to make these pivots ones. Well, this one's pretty easy because you, you could write for row three, zero, zero, one, one, but this one's going to look ugly. It's going to be zero, one, five halves, one half, and this one's going to be one, negative one half, zero, ten. So, I mean, right now when you get to this point, you don't have to make your pivots one like the book might suggest. And so let's write down the um, three equations. We have 2x minus y, I'll leave a space equals 10, 2y plus 5z equals 1, and then we have 31z equals 31. Now if you're like saying what's happening, remember there's your x column, there's your y column, there's your z column. Okay, so what do we know about z? looking at that last equation, we know that this is going to give us z equals 1. I'm going to go ahead and plug that into the second equation. Um, doing so many of these lectures, I'm going through these pens like crazy. I feel like that pen is starting to run out. Okay, so this is going to give me 2y plus 5 times 1 equals 1 to y equals negative 4 y equals negative 2. Okay, let's use the first equation to get what x is going to be. So we'll go right here. I have 2x minus y, so minus a negative 2 equals 10 2x plus 4 equals 10, 2x equals, um, what is 2x going to equal? Make sure I did this correctly, 2x minus negative y, 2x plus 4, okay. So then I have 2x equals 6. Okay, hold on. Here, y equals negative 2. I have 2x minus y equals 10. So 2x minus y. I don't know why I'm hesitating here. Equals 10. So I subtract 4. I get the 6. And I get x equals 3. So 6. So something's wrong with this. and minus y. y is negative 2. It's 10. Oh, <laughs> I know why something's wrong. Okay, because of negative. <laughs> wow. Boy. Uh, you put a negative in front of a negative 2, I don't know how it was becoming a 4. So this just must mean that I'm cranking out too many videos here. So I subtract 2 and get an 8, divide by 2 and get a 4 for x. So sorry about that. The deal is, once again, I may have told you guys, if, if I go ahead and try to be a perfectionist on the videos, I will not, I would have already, it would have been game over for our class. I wouldn't have all the videos out. So I have x equals 4, y equals negative 2, and z equals 1. I'm going to write that as an ordered triple for negative 2, 1, and so that completes problem number 3. Let's go ahead and do problem number 4. Just want to make sure you guys get good at this. So all I'm doing in, for the rest of this, this whole section is just examples. So let's do some examples here. We have this matrix that looks like this. Let's, oh, matrix. We have this system, this linear system that looks like this, and I'm going to write the augmented matrix. And so my first row is going to be 5, negative 3, 2, 3, and then 2, 4, 
negative 1, 7, and then 1, negative 11, 4, and 3. Okay, there's the equal sign if you'd like. And we're going to go ahead and make row 3 be the new row 1. So I'm going to go switch those two rows there. So when I do that, I get 1, negative 11, 4, 3, 2, 4, negative 1, 7, and then 5, negative 3, 2, 3. Okay, so I'm going to use this as a pivot. I'm going to multiply row 1 by, I'm going to want to get a 0 there, so I need opposites. I'll multiply row 1 by negative 2. So this gives me negative 2. 22, negative 8, and then negative 6. Another piece of paper. So my matrix then will become, oh, now there's a few things I have not been telling you, and I'm looking back on my notes to see if I do them, and I think I did. When you can do a matrix operation okay so I didn't do it I did this little sign here this just says so these two matrices are not equal for, in order for them to be equal they have to be identical like this would have to be a 5 and that would have to be a 5 and they're not so they're not equal but they're called this is called row equivalent so that's this is row equivalent and so now I've been doing this, because this is what we do in linear algebra. We say this is row equivalent to this one, which is going to be row equivalent to this guy right here. 1, negative 11, 4, 3. So row 2 is going to be gotten by adding those two rows together, and I end up getting 0, 24, negative 9, and positive 1. Let's go ahead and multiply row 1. Let's, let's put a 0 there. I'm going to multiply row 1 by a negative 5. So my temporary row 1 becomes negative 5, positive 55, negative 20, and then we have negative 15. I'm going to add that to row 3. That's going to become my new row 3. So look what I have here. I have 0. And then I have, let's see, 55 minus 3 is 52. And then negative 20 plus 2 is negative 18. And then, oh, and I did make another mistake. I was just noticing that now 22 and 4 is 26. Okay. If I keep making mistakes, I'm just going to have to turn off the video and take a nap or something like that. So, negative 15 plus a 3 is negative 12. Okay, so that's what we have there. We went ahead and put a zero there and a zero there, and our next goal is to put a zero there. Now in order to put a zero there, I'm going to use 26 as my pivot, and really all I need to do was multiply 26 by 2. It gives me 52. But now I want opposite, so I'm going to multiply row 2 by a negative 2. So row 1 is 1, negative 11, 4, 3. Row 2 is 0, 26, negative 9, 1. And row 3 is going to be, let's see what we get here. So my temporary row 2 is going to be 0, negative 52, positive 18, negative 2. I'm going to add those and that's going to give me row 3. Row 3 is going to be 0, 0, 0, and negative 14. 
Okay, I've got my triangle of zeros right here. I can put my equal sign back. So here's x, y, z. And so look at my last equation. Notice what my last equation says. It says 0 equals negative 14. Well, we see that. That tells us something. That tells us that our system has no solution. We were also using, in the last section, inconsistent. So that happens. And so we have three planes. Are they parallel planes? Um, they are not parallel planes. In fact, the, the planes can look like this, where one plane looks like, it looks like a line, but it's coming out towards you, and another plane looks like this, so their intersection point is a really a line, it's coming out towards you. And then the third plane maybe could be right there. And so do those three planes, I know they look like lines, but they're all coming straight out towards you, do they have any common points? The answer is no. So we'll move on to our next example, which will be example five. So we're going to start off by writing the augmented matrix. One, zero, two, five, um, three, negative one, negative one, one, six, negative one, five, sixteen. There's the equal sign. I've got a one there for my pivot, so I'm going to use that to put a zero there in that position and a zero there where the six is. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to work on this. I need opposites right there at the one and the three, so I'm going to multiply row one by a negative three. This is going to give me negative three, zero, negative six, negative fifteen. I'm going to add that to row two to give me the new row two. So I have one, zero, two, five, zero, because we have that, and then we have negative one. I'm adding this zero with this negative one, and then negative six and negative one is negative seven, and negative 15 and one is negative 14. Okay, let's go ahead and use a different color. I'm going to multiply this by, you know, this one by negative six. So multiply row one by negative six and add it to row three. This is negative six, zero, negative 12, negative 30. So we will add that to row three to give myself a new row three. Six minus six is zero. Negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. 5 minus 12 is negative 7. And 16 minus 30 is negative 14. Wow. So what do you notice about this matrix here, which is equivalent to that, row equivalent to that matrix? This matrix has two rows that are identical. Now, a new piece of paper here. Those two rows that are, are identical, we could use this as a pivot. We could just go row 2 minus row 3. That is allowed. So we can go negative 1 minus that, negative 7 minus that, negative 14 minus that. What's going to happen is the last row will become a row of zeros. Let's write that down. So this is 1, 0, 2, 5. 0, negative 1, negative 7, negative 14, and then the last row gets zeroed out. Now we do have our triangle of zeros here, and some of you might be thinking no solution, but this is going to be a little different. We don't have like 0 equals a negative 14. We ha our last equation really just says 0 equals 0. I'm going to go ahead and write one more matrix down. Um, I'll get this one by multiplying row 2 by negative 1 just to clear out those negatives. 
I wanted to do that in the other step, but I didn't want to lose anybody here. 0, 1, 7, 14, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so let's go ahead and write out my equations. Here's x, here's y, here's z. My first equation says x plus 2z equals 5. My second equation says y plus 7z equals 14. And my third equation is 0 equals 0. So when I end up losing an equation and I have more variables than equations, and this one is 0 equals 0, then this tells me I have infinitely many solutions. Now I'm going to have to try to find those infinitely many solutions and how would I find them? Um, the variable that did not have a pivot, you know, there's, there was no pivot there, that z I'm going to set equal to t. This is what we did in the last section. So what is this equation going to become? It's going to become y plus 7t equals 14 or y equals 14 minus 7t. And then this equation right here becomes what, x plus 2 times z, z is t, equals 5. So x equals 5 minus 2t. So I could still write an ordered triple, and it's going to go like this, x, y, z. So here's x. And then y, and then z is t. And so this expresses infinitely many solutions. This is a, a set of parametric equations in, in three dimensional space. The description of this is really a line in three space. But we don't really have to know that. Um, we just have to know how to get our answers. So that is problem number five. Let's go ahead and do another problem here. Problem number six. Okay, so problem number six is one that has, I'm just gonna spoil it for you. Or you could pause the video now and try to do this. Okay. I'll spoil it for you. This is another one that has infinitely many solutions. The reason I'm telling you that is because I think we need to see another one or you have to work out another one on your own. And we'll see how this one goes. The very first thing you do is set up the augmented matrix. And you know, I'm going to do this a little differently. I'm just going to go down the columns. One, three, two, two, five, five, three, seven, eight, 5, 12, 13, all positive numbers. Uh, most linear algebra teachers will go across the rows when they write numbers, but I just wanted to do it that way to be different. Um, 1 is a good pivot. I'm going to multiply row 1 by a negative 3 because I see that 3 there. So I have a negative 3 minus 6 minus 9 minus 15. Okay, so that is how that looks. I'm going to add that to row 2. That's going to become my new row 2. So I'll, I'll put this down here. So 1, 2, 3, 5. And we have 0 there, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and multiply row 1 by a negative 2 to put opposites. So, you know, this is 2, that will be negative 2. So we have negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 10. This is going to get added to row 3. It will become my new row 3, and I'll have those give me 0. And then we have 5 minus 4 is 1. 8 minus 6 is 2, and then 13 minus 10 is 3. So 
I need another piece of paper. The next thing I'm going to do is make the realization that row 2 and row 3 kind of look the same. I could just add those two rows together and that ends up zeroing out. If I add row 2 and row 3 together, you get 0, 0, 0, 0. So I'm going to go ahead and write out 1, 2, 3, 5. Row 3, I'll just zero that out. And then row 2, I'm going to go ahead and multiply that by a negative, so I'm going to get 0, 1, 2, 3. Put this back, and now we can see here's the X, here's the Y, here's the Z. We are done. We have our triangle of zeros. The first equation is x plus 2y plus 3z equals 5. The second equation is y plus 2z equals 3. And the third equation is 0 equals 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the z equal the parameter t. And I'm going to write out the second equation. So this is going to say y plus 2z, so 2t equals 3. So y equals 3 minus 2t. Okay, the next one, when I write out, it's going to be a little different than the last problem. It's just a little bit more challenging is this one right here. It says x plus 2y. So what is y? y is 3 minus 2t and then plus 3z, 3t equals 5. And I'm trying to solve for x here, but I'm going to distribute the 2 first. x plus 6 minus 4t plus 3t equals 5, x plus 6 minus t equals 5, bringing everything to the right hand side of the equation but keep an x there. x is going to equal t and then 5 minus 6, that's a negative 1. So this one has infinitely many solutions. I'm going to write it as an ordered triple. The ordered triple is going to be x, y, z. So x, y, and z, which is t. And so that is how you do systems of equations. I'm going to throw in one more problem in this. It's this one right here. So you get one like this at the end of your homework. It says find the quadratic function passing through the points. So you're trying to find the parabola, that's the quadratic function, passing through those three points. Now how can we do this? Well, our quadratic function, let's write it like this. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So if this parabola passes through those points, then those points should satisfy that equation, should make that equation true. So let's put this point in first, 1, 0. So x is 1, y is 0. When y is 0, we have that, and x is 1, we have a plus b plus c. Now I'm going to plug the point 316 in. So y is 16 and x is 3. So a times 3 squared, that's 9a, plus b times x, or b times 3, so we have 3b, and then we have plus c. I'm going to go ahead and put this point in, negative 2, comma, 21. Y is 21. X is 
negative 2. So I have negative 2 squared, which is actually a positive 4 for a. And then we have negative 2 times b, so this is minus 2b, and then plus c. So look at this. Find a quadratic function passing through these two points boils down to, can you solve this system? Now, to solve this system, I'm going to go ahead and write the augmented matrix. Making sure, I'm going to throw those on the right-hand side, so I'm not going to write that all again. I'll just write the matrix. So look at this. 1, 1, 1, 0. Do you see? I put the 0 on the other side. And this is 9, 3, 1, 16 and 4, negative 2, 1, 21. And so hopefully I didn't confuse too many people by throwing those numbers on the other side and writing the matrix like that. Another piece of paper. Costa College is going to think that I just like to eat this paper up. I kind of do like to eat this paper when no one's looking. Um, I'm going to use this one as a pivot. I'm going to multiply that one by negative 9. So it's going to give, give me negative 9, negative 9, negative 9, and a 0. And I'm going to add that to row 2 to give me a new row 2. So my new row 2, let's do row 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. Negative 6, negative 9 plus 3 is negative 6. And then we have, this guy is negative 8, and then this guy is 16. Now I'm going to go ahead and multiply row 1 by a negative 4. This is going to give me negative 4, negative 4, negative 4, 0. I'm going to add that to row 3 to give me the new row 3. 4 minus 4 is 0. Negative 2 minus 6 is negative 6. Um, 1 minus 4 is negative 3. And oh boy, so I just jumped up to check the camera, but um, it's still running. Sometimes it shuts off, so this is dependable equipment I have. 21 plus 0 is 21. Okay, now some of you might be thinking, let's scale down some of these rows. Well, let's just go ahead and use this as a pivot. So I can use this as a pivot. I'll multiply this one row by negative 1 so I end up getting 0, 6, 8, negative 16, and I'm going to add that to row 3. So the first row is 1, 1, 1, 0. So watch what, well never mind, I was going to do something, but I, wanna, I don't want to skip too many steps on this video. So third row is going to be 0, 0, and then we have 8 minus 3, which is 5, and then we have 21 minus 16, which is 5. What I wanted to do is I wanted to scale this down. Um, do I have to? No, but I'm going to do it anyway. Why not? So um, I'm going to multiply it by negative 1 half. So multiply row 2 by negative 1 half. I'll go ahead and put those those things there. We have 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 3, 4, negative 8, and then 0, 0, 0, uh, getting 0 happy here. I'm going to multiply row 3 by 1 fifth. So 0, 0, 1, 1. I'm done doing row operations. I'm going to go write out my equations now. Now remember, my equations look like A, B, C instead of X, Y, Z. So remember that. There's the A's, B's, and C's. Okay. So my first equation says A plus B plus C equals 0. The second equation says 3B plus 4C equals negative 8. And the third equation, this is a good one, C equals 1. I'm going to plug that into the second equation. I'm going to get 3B plus 4 times C, 4 times 1, equals negative 8. 3B equals negative 12 
B equals negative 4. Now I'm going to plug that and this one as well into this top equation which says A plus B plus C equals 0. So A minus 3 equals 0. A equals 3. Okay, so, you know, we want to just write our answer 3, negative 4, 1, because we're in the habit of doing that. However, we have this right here. This, this is what we were looking at. We were looking at a quadratic function passing through those points, and we, we started our quadratic function looking like this. y equals um, ax squared plus bx plus c. So why don't we go ahead and say y equals, instead of writing the a there, we can say 3x squared plus bx, so minus 4x, and then we have plus c, so plus 1. And if you want it to be extra fancy, instead of writing y, you can say f of x, because they did say quadratic function. You can take those three points and plug them in there and find out that all three of those points lie on that quadratic function. So this is, I know this is a weird application of this, but this is one of many applications. The applications include um, circuits, um, so people study electricity and things like that, oscillations and differential equations. There's just many applications of this. So you guys take care of yourselves. Have a good day. We are done with 8.2.